More breaking legal news today involving another scandal-plagued Republican politician, Congressman George Santos. NBC News can now confirm that the Justice Department has charged Congressman Santos with federal offenses. He's expected to appear in court tomorrow. It is unclear still what those charges are exactly, but we do know that prosecutors have been looking into his finances, including potential irregularities involving financial disclosures and loans he made to his congressional campaign. Joining me now is Democratic Congressman Richie Torres of New York, and Paul Butler, former federal prosecutor, professor at Georgetown School of Law, and an MSNBC legal analyst. I will start with you, Paul. Speculate for us. What do you think these charges could be? So campaign financing, false statements. Unlike Donald Trump with Santos, it was always a question of when he was going to be indicted, right. not if. We know, that in, we know that in January, Justice Department reached out to the Federal Election Commission, right. which was doing a civil investigation, Justice said, we want this case. Criminal cases come first. So this was expected. Mm -hmm. The smoking gun is $700,000, right. a loan that Santos gave his campaign. This is not a rich dude. Where right. did he get this money? Did he accurately reflect how it was spent right. on his forms? Those forms, Joy, are signed under penalty of perjury. So this is an easy case. So and, and there is this uh, this piece here, which is a, a New York Times piece, about $365,000 failure to account for that money in terms of spending. So he was not filling out the form saying, this is what I'm spending the money on. So that could be part of it. Well, prosecutors, they follow the money and they in Santos' case, follow the lies. And l let me ask you this. So, so Santos claimed when an associated, when, when, a, when a reporter asked him about the charges, he claimed he was finding out from them, from an Associated Press reporter. Does that sound likely to you as a former prosecutor? It, it sounds like another one of his lies, actually. Yeah. You never know, but I worked in the same section that is indicted, that uh, uh, presented to the grand jury, the indictment yeah. of Santos. And in that section... People are summoned, as Trump was, to the uh, criminal court in Manhattan, which yeah. means that their lawyer is told that they are going to be charged yeah. and they're allowed to come in and surrender. Yeah, it's not possible that, they, that he found oh, I found it in the news. It's just not possible. Extremely unlikely. But it's Santos, so we know he's not exactly the most honest guy. Congressman, let me bring you in here. You have called for Santos to resign. What is your reaction to this news? Well, for me, the long overdue prosecution of George Santos confirmed what we've long known that Mr. Santos is a pathological liar and lawbreaker who defrauded his way into the United States Congress and should be held accountable. But for me, there are only two morally acceptable outcomes. Either Santos resigns or House Republicans summon the courage to finally expel him in Congress. Like Republicans have a choice here. Either you're enabling the corruption of George Santos or you're expelling it from the United States Congress and recognizing that he's a deep rock at the core of Congress as an institution. What do you think the likelihood of that is? You know, in January, when he was asked, Kevin McCarthy said he was elected. That's not my place to do anything about it. He was not uh, too sanguine about uh, expelling him at that time. Let me play what you said, what he just said within the last hour. Here is Kevin McCarthy. So I think in America, you're innocent until proven guilty. But what, what we've watched in past behavior here, too, when there was another member indicted, I removed committee. I never put Santos on any committee. That member did get not just indicted, but was found guilty. I told him he had to resign. I would keep that same with any member here, whether you're a Republican or a Democrat. But he, but he is on committees, isn't he? Isn't, isn't Congressman on the banking and another committee? Well, 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 Speaker McCarthy appointed George Santos to two committees before removing him. So the statement is only partly true. But keep in mind that George Santos was the decisive vote in the Republican bill to default on America. He was the decisive vote. And so even though Republicans ran on a platform of draining the swamp, Republicans refused to drain the greatest swamp of them all, which is the corruption of George Santos. The reality is that Kevin McCarthy needs every vote that he can get, and he needs George Santos to remain in his in power and sabotage the full faith and credit of the United States. Well, let me come back to you, Paul, because that, that seems likely to me. It doesn't seem likely that he will be forcibly expelled and perhaps a, a prosecution will, will remove him on his own. But let's go through some of the things. Just to be clear, it is not illegal to lie about where you went to school, right? No. Okay, so he lied about where he went to school. He went to Horseman, not true. Graduated Brew College, not true. Attended NYU, not true. Um, it's not lie, It's not illegal to lie about where you used to work, Citibank, Goldman Sachs, not, not illegal. <laughs> Not illegal. Lying about your faith, said he was Jewish. Not true, <laughs> right? His charities, not true. Um, but then you get to these other things 
where you're actually raising money. You know, he said his mother died in 9-11. No, no, she did not. And those things are not true. And then he had a friends of the pets thing, not, not real. Um, where do the lies from a politician like him become crimes? Uh, when you lie to the FBI, uh, when you sign statements saying that everything that you've written on the statement is accurate and you know that that's a lie, then in addition to being a lie, that's a, a federal crime. And it's true, as you spoke with, uh, with the congressman about, that there's no congressional bar uh, to serving as a congressperson right. if you've been convicted of a crime. The rule is that if you are convicted of a crime and the punishment carries more than two years in prison, right. you can't vote on the floor, okay. you can't vote in committee, but you can do other congressional responsibilities. So the same way that Donald Trump could theoretically run from president from Rikers, this guy could be an indicted criminal, even convicted and still serve. That's exactly right. Uh, Congressman Torres, your thoughts on this? Because Ke as you said, Kevin McCarthy is desperate for these votes. He serves at the narrowest majority, but even though it's the same majority, you know, that Speaker Pelosi had, he ain't Speaker Pelosi. He doesn't know how to run his caucus like she ran hers. What is the likelihood in your mind that because he needs this vote, he will let him stay in office while, in theory, he is on trial. Look, I, I would never bet on the integrity of the Republican Party, which has a high tolerance for scandal and corruption and criminality. And George Santos, to me, is not an accident. He's an outgrowth of a broken Republican Party whose standard bearer is Donald Trump, who on the same day was found liable for sexual assault. So the modern Republican Party is an endless stream of scandal, and I have no confidence in the ability of the Republican Party to hold George Santos accountable at all. And what, I mean, how odd would it be for you? I mean, there, it, we are literally looking at the possibility that Donald Trump could theoretically get indicted either in Georgia um, or at the federal level, um, you know, for the Jack Smith investigation, and that you could have the pivotal swing vote or the pivotal vote for Kevin McCarthy in the House and the standard bearer of the Republican Party both facing criminal indictment. Uh, do any of the people on the other side of the aisle ever say to you that they understand how crazy that is? Look, the majority of Republicans want nothing to do with George Santos. Everyone acknowledges that he's corrupt and radioactive and has no business being in Congress. But the so-called reasonable Republicans live in fear of the extremes and refuse to hold George Santos accountable. And so as far as I'm concerned, those Republicans who are turning a blind eye to the corruption of George Santos, who are denying the voters of New York Three the representation they deserve, are complicit in defrauding the voters of the United States. That's how I view it. Uh, Congressman Richie Torres uh, of New York, thank you very much. Paul Butler, don't make any plans for the next couple of days because this is just going to keep on getting spicier and spicier. Thank you.